All right, welcome back everybody. Anybody that's new here, thanks for joining me today. Uh, especially considering the title and description of this video, it's gonna be the first one I'm doing of this. Um, it's gonna depend on you guys if I do more of these. Uh, I know last year people have kind of talked about it and the year before that and the year before that and the year be ever since I started doing this YouTube thing um, because I like to talk about things a lot. Uh, and people mentioned it like, Every other day I would ask, like, in a video, I'd say, what would you want, you know, would you want me to sit down and talk about something like this? And if you guys don't know what I'm talking about from the title and description, I'm talking about past ice fishing stories. Um, it came to mind one day a while ago, and I just never went through with it because I wasn't confident enough to do it. I can openly admit that because I didn't want to mess up anything, and I didn't know if you guys would care. Uh, you have to comment below. And hit that thumbs up button if you want to see more of these. Uh, just tell me if you you know what you like. Maybe some things you want to hear about or uh, things that I might have mentioned before. Uh, I have a lot of ice fishing videos, so there's a lot of them out there where I'm sure I was talking and I mentioned a previous ice fishing video. So there's that. But comment below if you want to see more of these and hit that thumbs up button. So if there's 24 comments there needs to be 24 thumbs up if there's 500 comments there needs to be 500 thumbs up i don't care how many thumbs up it gets but if this gets like 5,000 views and i only have like 100 comments there's no reason to, for me to just keep doing these i might do a couple of them just because i like talking about stuff that i've done in the past but this depends on you guys i want to know if you guys like this stuff or not um to simply put it i'm gonna try to go into good detail on past experiences and i'm going to try to make some of these videos uh kind of helpful uh like today's video it just came to mind i was like i really should put this out before ice fishing season for anybody that's new to ice fishing you will benefit from a lot of these videos because i'm going to talk about all the bloopers that i didn't catch on film uh on days i didn't film or before i was filming and stuff like that I've been ice fished my entire life, so there's a lot of things that have happened, and uh, I'm going to let you guys know about them. Plus, I'll be able to look back at these videos later on in life and laugh, because I'll actually be able to listen to myself talk about things I've done to myself. Either way, let's uh, let's get started on uh, what we're, the subject I'm going to base today's story on. Okay, so from the title and description, it should be pretty sim or simple to come up with what we're talking about, but... When I go into detail, you'll understand why these guys, these are uh, Cthulhu Micro Ice Spikes. They go on my boots, uh, either or. I have my Baffin Impacts and my Baffin Titans. They fit on both of them. And uh, I don't go home with, or I don't go ice fishing anymore without them. I will actually will turn around and drive an hour home if I don't have those sometimes because, well, in today's story, hopefully you'll understand. Okay, so before we get started, I wanted to just bring up one thing that I always do. Well, I started it last year, I believe. Um, I do merch for you guys every winter. Uh, last winter, I had a bunch of different uh, hoodies and stuff like that. I still have some of these ones up because they're for my Tackle Tip Tuesday videos. Uh, so if you guys haven't seen those yet, I link everything in the description that I'm going to be using and all that stuff. But my merch link is at the top of my description. You guys want to help, help out the channel? Pick up some merch, rep my DWS Outdoors. This is an old merch shirt. I just happen to like this one a lot. Um, but uh, yeah, I have I have a whole list of new uh, stuff for this season that I put together. And I think if you guys like ice fishing as much as I do, which most of you guys do, uh, remember, if you like these videos, give them a thumbs up. I don't know what else to say to you guys, but it really helps the channel out. Um, and I... I I'm trying to pump as many videos out as I can a month. I, I usually put out like 10, 11, 12 of them. Sometimes I'll put more out if I have time to. Um, in the winter time, it's literally, I film almost every day of the winter. Uh, that's how hard I do this ice fishing thing. Um, but let me see. I actually have this written down over here. I just want to go over this with you guys. My merch right now, I have stickers. I actually have zip-up hoodies. Those are new. Uh, I never had those before. I've always had pullovers. Um, but my zip-up hoodies, I have long sleeves. Um, you guys have probably seen me in uh, different types of my long sleeves. There's like three different kinds of long sleeves. Um, standard sweaters. And then I do believe I have two or three different 
uh, pullover hoodies this year. Um, but it's all ice fishing based. So if you guys go to my merch link in the description below, go all the way to the bottom of the page. It's not at, it's not at the top of the page because it's still open water season, but I'm going to drop this early for you guys. Cause what I want you guys to do is I'm going to share all the videos or photos that you guys take on my Instagram, which is at DWS Dave 31. Um, if you guys tag me when you buy it, I'll take your take your photos and I'll share them to my page. Um, I'll share them on my Facebook, my Instagram, and my Twitter. I'll do it on all three. So uh, for any anybody that gets merch, remember to tag me <laughs> because I want to share the stuff that you guys are repping me with. And like I said, I have all those different options: stickers, zip up hoodies, long sleeves, sweatshirts, pullover hoodies, all sorts of stuff that you guys can wear for the ice fishing season. So when it gets cold. Rep DWS and help out the channel, it'll be good. But uh, let's get into this story about <laughs> why you need ice cleats. Okay, now that we have more storytelling, mood lighting, we're going to go right into this. These guys right here have saved my life many, many times. Uh, and I used to go 50 50 on like whether you needed them or not uh it was one of those scenarios where i've always been wearing them uh most of my life i've had 50 60 different kinds uh i will link these in the description below for everybody to get themselves because these guys will save your butt uh they do have a few problems with like creasing and stuff like that if you beat the crap out of them or like walk across uh, concrete or steel or anything like that like I've walked across train tracks and other things that have not got along with how they crimp these things but they work better than anything else on the market uh, these are the Catula micro ice spikes um, but the story I would like to tell you <laughs> and it's kind of a ridiculous one because it should have never happened it's one of those things um, me and my buddy were going out fishing on Lake Winnebago. Um, any of you guys that have been subscribed that are from around the Wisconsin area, you all know who or what Lake Winnebago is. It's a monster. It's it's one of the biggest lakes in the Midwest. It's literally a monster. Um, it's miles and miles long. It's miles and miles across. And I had never owned a machine for going out on the ice. I'd have driven my truck and stuff like that out on the ice before. Uh, and there's a bunch of other stories that go along with that. But, uh, sticking to this one my buddy offered me the ability to take his machine because he got a new one so i had like an older four-wheeler uh it was a two-wheel drive but it had chains on it it was good and then he had a four by four and the thing is is i like to drive fast so the thing is is i still had to shift mine his was an automatic well in order to shift it with these big clunky boots on and not getting hung up i had taken these off uh, while we were out running around in the ice, but the thing was is I wasn't slipping around at all without them on because The Baffins have an amazing grip pattern on the bottom of them and if there's any kind of crunchy snow um, Any of you ice fishermen know this uh, crunchy snow or rough ice like like ice that froze while it was getting blown around by the wind whatever you don't tend to slip on it as much so we were ripping around the lake and i mean it, it had been like half a day and any of you guys that fish winnebago know like we were probably 50 holes deep at this point and i was just getting tired and my brain was just not working properly and it's one of those scenarios where you always got to be thinking when you're out ice fishing because stupid stuff happens when you stop thinking um he actually had asked me, he goes, are you going to put your cleats on? Because he was asking me if he wanted to put his on and if I should put mine on. And I'll never forget it because I was like, no, I don't think we need it. There's crunchy snow and we're going to be walking. Um, here's a tip for you guys that fish Winnebago. Um, if you're new to fishing Winnebago, if you ever want to try fishing like Winnebago, this works on, on any giant body of water. There was a giant heave where two ice sheets had pushed up. And along that heave is where we were drilling holes. And I planned on drilling like 15, 20 of them out. It was just, that's standard procedure. Um, and it's like a half a mile walk I was going out. I walked all the way out. And I had my gas auger at the time. Uh, it wasn't that heavy, but it's still a big gas auger. It was a four-stroke, uh, not the Honda, but either way, gas auger, 
put it over my shoulder, walk out, drill 20, 30 holes, do just fine. But halfway out, <laughs> I'm walking and I look and I look down and I see a smooth spot right next to like all the rough ice. And I even told myself this as I was drilling holes out. And this is one of those dumb moments and I'm gonna admit this one to you guys and it's just because I'm trying to convey how this works and I'm trying to make this story interesting so that you guys enjoy these. You might get a kick out of this. So I'm like, hey, there's a slippery spot right there. Uh, don't forget that. <laughs> Walk all the way out. My buddy walked the other direction. We start walking back towards each other. And it's one of those moments in time where everything froze. So I'm walking, 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 um, looking at my holes, making sure there's not a bunch of slush in them all. Walking, walking. I look up and I make eye contact with my buddy, like walking back the other way. And he was almost back to our four-wheelers already because he had turned earlier. Um, and I was getting closer and closer. So I, like, I'm paying attention to him instead of looking down like I'm supposed to be doing. I throw my auger over my shoulder because I was carrying it on my side and it was getting heavy. Throw it over my shoulder, put my arm on it. I stumble a little bit and I see myself kick like there was just like a little ridge line of powdery snow. If you guys have been ice fishing for a while, you know where this is going. I happen to kick that pile of powdery snow onto that glare ice spot that I was, hey, remember where that's at? Well, when I did that, it kind of covered it lightly. So, like, even, I think I even looked down when I stumbled, and I didn't notice that spot. I thought that was just part of the crunchy snow. And in two steps later, I made eye contact with my buddy. He looked at me, like, looked down, looked up at me. At the exact same time, my feet proceeded to go about a foot above my head, and I put my auger above me like this as I was falling, and it slammed me in the chest. And if anybody's been in a fight before, or if has any kind of combat sports background, you know what a body knockout is? Because <laughs> that's basically what I did to myself. I hit the ice so hard. I was lucky, and I was able to tuck my head so my head didn't bounce off the ice. But I hit the ice like this so hard that when it hit me and I hit the ice, it like compressed my body and I was out for a couple seconds. And then I got back up and I tried playing it off like nothing had happened. <laughs> and I'll never forget it because I just remember when I got back up, my buddy was just like looking at me. And he wasn't moving or anything. He was just looking at me and waited for me to get over to him. And by the time I got over to him, he started laughing because he noticed I wasn't like hurt or broken or anything like that and he just he did the are you okay <laughs> and i was like i'm never ever ever again leaving without cleats on my boots so here's a tip this is a big one if you're new to ice fishing and you have the opportunity to do this um this is a, this is my favorite thing right now because i have two sets of boots these are my titans uh, it's just a standard slip-on waterproof boot. These are my uh, impacts. They happen to be rated for like 50 more below zero than my Titans. I leave these with my cleats on them. I take them off at the end of the season. I just put these on to show you guys the boot and like with them on it. But uh, <laughs> leave your cleats on your ice fishing boot. You don't necessarily have to have another... $200 pair of boots laying around. Just another pair of shoes or boots. Wear those to the ice. Put your ice fishing boots on. Now your cleats are always on them. Do not take them off for the rest of the season. At the end of the season, take them off. Comprende? <laughs> That's just my first ice fishing story for you guys. Uh, for this season. I might do this, just like I said, to reminisce about stupidity and things that I learned from and hopefully help some of you guys out. All right, guys. So <laughs> back to the normal lighting. And uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed today's video. It's one of those things. I've been wanting to do stuff like this. I've been wanting to do like bloopers, reels, and all that stuff. But I get in such a zone when I'm editing. I 
a lot of times I won't save those clips or I won't even know what I'm looking at or whatever. Uh, I want to do bloopers clips in this uh, this ice season coming up. Like I said, if you guys enjoy these story time videos, uh, this is just episode one. We'll see if we get to episode two. You guys got to hit that thumbs up button. Um, and then obviously, like I said before, if you want to support the channel, you want to see a bunch of new, good, exciting, adventurous ice fishing clips, pick up some merch. Uh, just one thing, pick some stickers up. I mean, it doesn't matter. Anything helps. Uh, but... Yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed, like I said, this video. It's one of those ones where people were saying it enough that it's been kind of twisting around in my brain for a while. And I was like, I don't know if I should do it because there's some embarrassing stuff like that one. Where I can actually feel the impact of the, <laughs> the auger hitting me in the chest just thinking about that stupid thing. And that was like seven years ago, eight years ago. Uh... Just think about all, I live on the ice, so just think about all the other things that have happened to me in the past year, and uh, comment below, like I said, do you guys, do you guys want to hear more of these stories, and uh, I'll try to keep them short. If you guys want long form ones where I try to come up with some more visuals, I'll do that. Um, we'll see how that works out. If I can do some current ones, maybe of the season, maybe I'll do them every, every winter, I'll do them, or something like that, but I have a lot in the past that I need to kind of bring up if you guys want to see these so like i said before hopefully you guys enjoyed today's video obviously if you're not new here you know what's up but if you are new can you please just remember to